Hello, my name is Julian Thomas and I'm a Managing Director of Race Logic. Today I'm going to give a presentation on maximizing the corner entry speed. Race Logic manufacture and design the VBOX HD2 twin camera video and data logging system that has been designed to allow drivers to analyze their performance on track and find ways of improving. All of the data I'm going to present today has been analysed on Circuit Tool software, which is our analysis programme we have developed over the years to make it really simple for the driver to find out exactly what he's doing on track and how he can improve. So, I'm going to start with positioning and the braking. As you approach a corner, it is very important that you get the positioning of your car correct. To maximize your corner entry speed, you need to use every last little inch of the track. If you're not right up to the edge of the track when you're turning in, then you can be losing quite a bit of corner entry speed and also apex speed. This is a great example. I'm lucky enough to drive sometimes with Callum Lockie, who has driven many, many laps of the Silverstone GP circuit because he runs the Gold Track track days and he can also do driver tuition. So many weeks of the year he's bashing around Silverstone circuit so he really knows every inch of this track. And this is a typical example of him driving into Cops Corner and you can see that he is very far over to the left hand side of the track. In fact his wheel is almost touching the grass. This is to give the greatest entry speed into that corner. Now, the thing with Silverstone, especially recently, is the curbs leading up to Cops Corner and all the way around the track are very, very severe. So what you'll see, if you look at the GPS data trace, which you get from the V-Box, you can see that Callum has run along the outside of the curb, and then just before he turns in, he jinks left and then turns in. And this allows him to gain about another meter of track space to give him absolute maximum corner entry speed. This is a shot of myself and a friend of mine, Alex, when we went to Portimao last year in his fabulous Austin Healy. Now Alex is a very experienced driver, he's been driving for about 15 years on racetracks um, and I've worked with him quite a bit on driver tuition and he really does know his way around Portimao. So we're looking at turn five and if you look at these two in-car video shots, you can see that Alex is very much in the same place on the track using the maximum amount of space that is allowed and everything looks good. What you'll also note is it's quite a slow speed corner, entry speed sort of between 45 and 50 miles an hour, and also it's a left-hand curve. Now, looking at the car, it's a right-hand drive car, so Alex and myself are sat Fire over to the right hand side. We go to turn one, it's a different story. So why is this? Alex knows what he's doing, he knows he should be far over to the left hand side to use up all of the track, but he's not. I can improve a little bit, I've probably left about that much room, but I, my car position is a lot better than Alex's. Now, this is a much faster corner, so turn one at Porty Pau, I'm entering at about 90 miles an hour, so nearly double the entry speed of the previous corner. Now, what does this actually mean? What difference does it make? You think, well, if you're a, a meter over to the left, that's not really gonna make much difference, is it? Well, what I've done is I've analyzed the minimum corner radius, and the minimum corner radius dictates your minimum speed around the corner. So, mine was about 78 meters, and Alex's was 72 meters. And what that meant was, at the apex, I could carry four miles an hour more than Alex, and throughout this entire section, I was gaining about 0 0.5, 0 0.6 of a second, just by placing my car further over to the left-hand side. Now, why is Alex not placing his car fully over to the left? It's a very fast corner, as I've said before. So, as a driver, and a very fast corner, you're looking a long way down the road. When you're on a slow speed corner, 
your vision is much closer to the car, so you can position the car more accurately without having to rely on your peripheral vision. So at high speed, you're staring very far ahead, so you're relying on your spatial awareness and your peripheral vision. So you give yourself a little bit of leeway. Also, Alex is sat on the right-hand side of the car and he's trying to place his front left wheel on the left-hand side of the track. So there's a bit of a disconnect between him and that spot. So that also adds into the safety margin that he's built in. Now, it's very easy to say you must place your car on the very edge of the track and use every inch of the track. But how do you go about practicing this? Because you don't want to drive off the track. You don't want to have a wheel on the dirt as you turn into a high-speed corner because then you'll just spin. So what I do and also what is recommended by a number of pro coaches such as Ross Bentley in his fantastic book, Speed Secrets, is to practice these techniques on the road. Now, that sounds dangerous, but it's not because you can do them at slow speed. What I do is I pick various markers on the road, such as drain covers or cat's eyes, and I try and run my left-hand wheel or my right-hand wheel over those whilst staring as far ahead as possible. And that, that's the key, because on the track at high speed, you're looking a long way ahead. So drive on the road 30 miles an hour, stare as far ahead as you can, and think, right, I'm going to put my right-hand wheel bang on that little divot in the road and see if you can place and understand where your wheels are, but at low speed, and you just keep doing it. You'll be surprised how inaccurate you are when you start looking a long way ahead. So you've really got to develop that peripheral vision. On the approach to the corner, the second important aspect is the braking. What I've found over the years is you work with a pro driver, you drive alongside him, and they can brake a little bit later than you. How do they do that? Because you think, if you look at the retardation or the brake pressure, you're pressing the brakes just as hard. Well, what I've found is, especially if you've got a H-button gearbox, if you are heel and towing down the box, then you might come off the brake slightly as you move your foot across to blip the throttle. So this is something that you really ought to be aware of. It's difficult to feel it in the car because you're moving, your hands are moving, your feet are moving, so it's difficult to feel that you've come off the brake pressure and then gone back on again. Now, this is an example from Portimao from Turn 5, so where Alex was very good with his positioning. He's had to brake, as you see, a little bit early, earlier than me. And when you look at the data, this is the longitudinal acceleration. So this is the braking force and acceleration force of the car, shown as two lines. Alex's curve is in blue, this one here, and mine is in red. And you can see that at the point where he's just about to change gear, the longitudinal acceleration drops off a bit and then comes back, because his foot's moved off the brake, he's gone to blip the throttle, and his foot's come off the brake slightly. Mine has a little bit, so I can certainly improve in that area, but his has quite significantly. Now, what I've done is I've analysed the braking distance between 100 miles an hour and 50 miles an hour for this particular corner, and my braking distance was about 13 metres shorter than Alex's. So that meant I could brake that much later, 13, 14 metres later than Alex, and I will slow the car down to exactly the same speed at the same point by the time we get to the corner. So it's very important to get constant retardation when you're traveling in a straight line under braking. 